Make. Are we live? Uh, we are live. Oh my god, I was like, are we early? I can't wait like, we're almost early. What? All right, guys, happy Sunday. We're on time. What? We are on time. Let me see. I'm calling you guys up on the Facebook page. It is windy AF. Windy as beep around here. It's crazy. This is the time of year we call, what do we call this time of year? Can I? Papagayo. Papagayo, the winds of papagayo. So the winds from, there's a, what is it? A papagayo peninsula? No, it's yeah, a. Yes. There's yes. a peninsula. Uh -huh. And then the winds go crazy. Rhythmia is live now. There we go. We are on um, That come and they just go crazy. And it always happens around Christmas time. And it's, it, look at that. Can I show them? Show the, show the trees. today Kenneth we had a big tree over here almost collapse so we've got some ladders and stuff in the background where the maintenance the amazing maintenance team here at Rhythmia is doing some reparations so that this tree does not cause a huge accident by falling on top of our restaurant because that would suck <laughs> and we are just fully prepared to enjoy these winds while they last. They're nice because they're refreshing. They're not so nice because they, when you're at the beach, the sand goes in your eyes. Or if you're out on the gravel roads here, it's bad enough when cars are speeding along gravel roads with the amount of dust that happens, but when you're dealing with the winds on top of that, oof. Right, Kenneth? Oof. Heavy. <laughs> That's the way we describe it. Oof. That's also the way I describe my baby's dirty diapers. Oof. <laughs> Oof, just horrible. Allison is watching saying hello. Mindy is saying hello. You guys are tuning in from uh, somewhere. Obviously, you're tuning in from somewhere. Please let me know where. I've got a bit of orange peel on the back of my iPhone. <laughs> Scratch that off. I made an orange and banana smoothie yesterday. <laughs> so my phone's had orange peel on it ever since then. The pith, the white sticky bit, the pith. Mindy says, I'm looking forward to my call with Rhythmia tomorrow. Awesome, Mindy. Jeff Harding saying, hey, from Salem, Oregon. Mindy is watching from New Jersey in the house. Allison, Delray Beach, Florida. Okay, so we're doing burgers and fries today. Because quite honest, I'm running out of ideas. And no one is really giving me inspiration, guys. So hit me up with some ideas of what you'd like to see in these videos. Um, I've decided what I'm gonna do over the next month, so I have that decided, but as of February, I don't have very many, uh, I don't have ideas written down, so please, if you have anything you would like to see, or anything that you would like to re-see, I've been doing this for over two years now, so we've got a whole library of these videos over on, Rhythm, on the Rhythmia page here, but also on the Rhythmia YouTube, so you can go back and see. Um, but I will probably start repeating some stuff, because I, I, the requests that I do get are typically for things we've already done here. Veggie keto. We talked about that. We've done a whole thing on veggie keto, but we can do mm, some recipes related to that. Anna Maria Island, Florida is where Rhonda's watching from. Petra's watching from Switzerland. Desiree saying hello from Belgium. I see your kind of weather has reached you guys. Ha ha ha. Jacob is watching from Alaska. Holy smokes. We got like, we are spanning the globe this afternoon. That's super cool. You know what I want to do, Kenneth? Mm -hmm. I want to get us a big map. And every day we can put a sticker where everyone's watching from. Oh, like nice. we got Switzerland and Belgium and Alaska and all over the states. Like how cool would that be? Sounds super cool. I think we're gonna do it. Yeah. 2020 is a week of newness. My mom is watching. Terry Pearson oh, saying hello, Meg. Okay, guys. So here we go. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get this rocking and rolling. So burgers and fries. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is the burger. We're gonna make it, and then we're gonna get a cookie, and then we're gonna talk about the fries. And this is, I do burgers and fries all the time at home. Um, usually some sort of plant-based burger on a big fluffy bun with baked sweet potato fries. That is my go-to. I do that probably at least once a week, and then for all the good burger toppings, cheese and dill pickles and mustard, and usually the vegan chipotle mayonnaise that you can buy, uh, just lettuce, tomato, all that good stuff. So we're gonna do a version of that today. So we're using minimal equipment today. Today we're using the food processor. I would suggest you use the food processor, not a blender for this recipe, just because of the ingredients that we're using. So 
what I've got here are some almonds. These are whole almonds that we just toasted. So you can see they're nice and toasted. Delicious. I'm gonna put about a cup of those into my food processor. And this is gonna be really loud, you guys. I'm gonna pulse this and it's gonna be really loud. So can I you? maintain texture kind of want to show them what's going on there just in here the texture we want good texture because we are going to continue processing these almonds with the other ingredients we don't want to go too far I'm taking a drink mm. because I'm already my mouth is parched so we've got our almonds in there the rest of our ingredients hello the rest of our ingredients are as follows mushrooms we're doing a vegan burger, so we want it to be as meaty as possible. So our almonds are gonna give us some great texture, some chewy meatiness once they're cooked, as well as some plant-based proteins. And mushrooms are just amazing. And they're quite often used as a meat substitute. So I'm gonna throw in a bunch of those, like a lot. This is like a whole, like, you know, the little, what do you call them? We call them bandejas. Like, bandeja, yeah. A little bandejas, but in English, package the package of mushrooms like this the traditional like what is it 427 grams or something like that a whole one sliced and tossed in there what i really should have done is sauteed those first fail so let's pretend we did that heat that up we would normally want to saute those first but we're not going to bother today we're just going to throw all the ingredients in i'm just thinking that it would taste better we have raw onion we have the, two, the mushrooms Add this step in if you make this at home. A little bit of oil in the frying pan, saute the onions and the mushrooms with the seasonings. And they're gonna end up with a much um, earthier, meaty like flavor. So do as I say, not as I do. Isn't that the old saying? I'm just peeling the skin off this onion. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna process it all because it's TV. Imagine we have these all sauteed together. You could add in some shredded carrots or shredded zucchini if you want to get in some extra vegetables especially if you're making this for your kidlets not that i feel like you should have to hide vegetables from kids but sometimes you do sometimes you do and i'll probably do it myself so small red onion or like uh like a half cup minced red onion putting that in there and then our meaty base is the lentils this is going to be the other great texture another great plant pro plant based protein but i'm not going to get that in there just yet Beautiful. Great. So we're going to add in a few more things. Seasonings. I have here a garam masala. This is just like a, a spice mix. It's what I love to put in these burgers. When I originally read about this recipe, this is what we did. I'm going to give it a good, a good pinch. You can swap in any spice blend you want. Herb de Provence would be really good. Uh, just a regular curry. I'm adding a bit of oregano. I'm going to add in some onion powder or garlic powder, whatever you want to do. This is, what do we do? Garlic. Oof, garlic. Scaring away the vampires. And a good generous amount of salt, because this is a lot of almonds and a lot of lentils and stuff like that. So I'm gonna throw my lentils in. So these are cooked. You can buy, you can use canned if you want, but about two cups worth, canned or cooked. Thank you, Kenneth. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> garlic up the nose. And here we go, we're gonna pulse this to combine. We want, like I said, we wanna keep texture. Awesome, I'm gonna add in some cilantro. This is my fresh herb of choice. I'm gonna toss that in, keep it pulsing. We're using straight up uh, gluten-full, not gluten-free, 
panko. That's going to be our binder. So I'm going to just sprinkle a bit of that in. And then we're going to pulse it up and see how it looks. Did I turn that on yet? Yes, I did. These are the songs that I sing to my baby. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, when I'm bouncing her and I'm singing it to my food processor now. <laughs> I am a mom. I am a mom. Here we go. Pulse, 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 pulse. All right, so this is, look at that. Mm -hmm. Smells delicious. So what I want to do here is in real life time, what you would do is you would put this into a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap or a tea towel and let it refrigerate for about an hour or more, even overnight, so that this can firm up. Because it's much easier to form into patties when it is cool. But we don't have the time for that. And I wanted to show you guys the process and the ingredients. So here we go. Pretend this has been cooled. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my oil heating. So this is just this is coconut oil I'm using here today because I like the taste and it's it's good at decently high heats. And then we're just gonna get in there. I'm using plastic gloves, you can use your clean, bare hands. And we're just gonna form this because see how soft it is, it's kinda it might fall apart when we're cooking it, but that's fine. It's still gonna taste delicious. You let that oil heat up, and then we're gonna just drop it into that oil. It's not ready, so I'm just gonna put it on there. And in the meantime, in the meantime, in the meantime, Galaxy's barking. In the meantime, I'm gonna check these comments over here. Scrolling back, scrolling up. Venga. Whoa, lots of comments. Galaxy. Hey, 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 hey. What's the matter, little girl? Galaxy. She's barking because there's men up on ladders doing work and that's weird. And dogs bark at things that aren't normal. So she's freaking out about that. Let's see what else is going on here. Whoa, there's so many people commenting. I don't know if I can keep up with this. Holy smoke. Okay. A, a beer is saying Halifax. Allison is saying yummy plant-based potato comfort food. Ooh, we can do that. Sounds like a fun idea. Hey, scony girl. I don't know what a scony girl is. <laughs> is every day a set meal, Mindy's asking. Nope. We have buffet here for the most part. Um, if you're not doing the medicine for whatever reason, at night we do a la carte dinners because um, there's not very many people here that don't do the medicine. And when you're doing the medicine here, you only have breakfast and lunch. So at dinner, it's a la carte plated meals, but you have choices. Um, Jeff Harding saying it's buffet style. That is a righto. Michelle Maria saying, yay, so good to see you, Michelle. I sent you a message today. I think you might have sent me one back. I haven't had a chance to look back. Nikki's asking if cashews or walnuts taste as good. Heck yeah. You can sub out any of your favorite nut. Cashews, maybe not because they are super soft. So it might, well, no, try it. I would say try it. Pecans would be really good. But make sure you toast your nuts. Pine nuts, also really good. Um, but toast them, it brings out the flavor and it's just going to help with the texture. These steak mushrooms mimic me very well. Yeah, totally. Morel, morel mushrooms are really great. Shiitakes, like any mushroom is really, really great. You can grill oyster mushrooms like on the barbecue, like whole, really, really good. Many things I've advised to change my diet. All plant-based month prior. Da, 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 da. Don't go all. You don't have to go all plant-based. You can still have chicken and fish. Just avoid pork and beef. Would be a really good idea. Uh, da, 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 da. Approximately how much of each spice? I didn't measure, did I? Um, I'll write out. I would say so much of this is to taste. But for this recipe, I would do probably about two two teaspoons of your spice mix, whatever you want to do for that. Um, and then about a tea, half a teaspoon of the garlic powder. The oregano I put in about a half a teaspoon. Drop that in there and let that cook away. Um, but really, it's it's really to your taste. But I can write it down. I'll put the recipe. I did that last week. I put the recipe in the comments, and I will do that again today just because I know it helps a lot of you. So I'm going to – I wrote it out in my brain. I do have it written. I sent it, I sent it to Kenneth. He has the right me measurements. I'll put it in the comments as soon as we're done. Um, what else is going on here? Du, 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 du. Hi, Meg from San Diego. Gretchen is saying. Zinn has joined us. Hi, Zinn. Tracy saying. Oh, she's from Wisconsin. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's so much happening. Okay, so 
burger is cooking. Look at that. You can see this deliciousness. And we want to not touch that. We want to just let that oil, coconut oil, do its work and get a nice crusty brown. Um, oh my God. Brain fart. Crusty brown. Crust. <laughs> Sear on it, if you will. Before we touch it, we'll flip it because it will fall apart otherwise. Normally what I do with these burgers, we make thousands. Today we're not going to do that, we just don't have time. So we're going to talk a bit about how we're making our french fries. So we're going to use this here tuber. What is this called? Yucca. Yucca or cassava. cassava. So you'll see these, I used to see these all the time when I lived in Toronto in the, like, in the international aisle of the produce department. They have this really, they're really quite firm and heavy and they have this waxy brown coating everywhere you buy them they do. They grow here like crazy in Costa Rica and, and they're used in like almost as often as potatoes are used here, right? Or more. Very traditional uh, root vegetable, super cheap to buy. Never knew how to use it till my ex-husband who is Costa Rican started cooking it at home all the time and I fell immediately in love. So this is called the yuca cassava. You can buy cassava flour. Um, it's gluten free. So it's quite often used in, in different in gluten free flour combinations. But this is what it looks like in the grocery store. So this is what you would buy it like. So to use it, I always like to cut it open. And some rest, some places when you buy it, they give you, there's a knife there or a guy with a knife there that will actually cut it open for you. So you can see, because quite often they are um, rotten. And you'll see that by that, if there's black inside, then you know it's not very good. But these, this one looks pretty good. So it's a white flesh, it's super hard, like really hard. So you gotta be careful when you're dealing with it. And this wax coating is, is you know, is, is what you gotta work through. So I like to cut it into a small enough piece. We've got a little bit of a rot there. So that's gonna, whoo, that's gonna help be my opening. So I just like to cut through just far enough. Oh, when they, when they rot, they really stink. Like, wah. can you smell that? Wah. But I'm gonna use that. We just wanna cut through enough that we're through there. There's two layers here. There's the waxy outer layer and then there's a kind of a pinkish inner layer normally. Yeah, we just wanna have our knife go through that. Ooh, that's stank. Let's go the other side. So not all the way into the white, just enough so I can kind of slip my knife underneath there. So you can see the two layers. So this this brown waxy one and then this kind of pink, super hard one. We just need to get past those. And I like to just keep using my knife all the way around. You just gotta be careful. <laughs> just like me, because I'm so careful and safe with a knife. <laughs> and this is the idea. Normally if you get your knife on there just right, you can tear it off in big pieces. So imagine I did that. Look at that. See that pink? We want to get out of there. And it separates really well. The flesh from that pink skin separates really well. And then the idea is ugh, cut that stank off. Blah. Blah. And just rinse my hands. Can you please post the recipe? Yes, Mindy, I will definitely post the recipe. And it on that with really easy directions. So all we need to do is cut this up into sticks like you would any sort of potato. But the, thing, the other thing to know about yucca when you're using it is that there's a very stringy centerpiece. See this bit? So you can't usually get rid of it when you're using it raw, but once you cook, you can pull this. Can you see that? That stringy center, you'll just be able to, once it's cooked, you'll be able to just peel that all out really easily because this is horrible. You don't want to eat that. So how do you cook it is the next big question. So the best way that I like to cook it is, is a two-step process, um, boiling it first. So you would just boil it in water like you would a potato, but it takes like an hour or more to cook it through so till, it, till it's almost fork tender. And when it's cooked, it starts looking like this. So it's, and it, this is like one of the starchiest vegetables. It is so starchy. So this is not keto, but I don't care because I ain't keto. I'm yucca. I'm pro yucca, but it's super starchy. And this is what it'll cook like. And it's, so you can see it's, it's soft like a potato. And then, so this is just it boiled. Not really tasty boiled at all. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna fry it. But first I'm gonna flip this burger. Look at that. We got a little bit of a crust on it. It's still, the, the chilling it was, is de will definitely help it set so it doesn't come apart when you're cooking it, but it's fine. It's gonna taste delicious at the end of the day. So what did I do? To cook the rest of this yucca, so this is the, the boiled version, is earlier in the kitchen, I in my frying pan, I just put some more coconut oil, 
And those toasty brown bits are pieces of garlic, minced garlic. So good. So this is how my ex-husband used to do it all the time. He's the best in the world. So then as you're cooking it in the garlic, it gets the little, not only does it get the taste of the garlic, but it gets the little bits of the toasted garlic all along. Oh, so good. It's better than French fries, you guys. Look at this, come on. Look at that. It's so good. So this, my friends, you have to try it. It's so good. And then you dip that in like a chipotle. What are you looking at, Kenneth? <laughs> Dip it into like a chipotle mayonnaise. So good. Okay, so let's plate this up for kind of lunch. Mindy says you can have 20 to 25 grams of carbs living, a day living in the keto lifestyle. Yes, but this is probably more than that. <laughs> you guys are super carby. Um, but, sorry, Kenneth. Um, I, uh, yeah, and I'm not gonna get into the, I did a whole thing about keto diet. And uh, I, we have, I have staff here that are on the keto diet. Traditional plant medicine diet is not very keto friendly because it is very rice and beans and, and lentils and all of that heavy. Um, but I'm, I digress, I'm not gonna talk about diets right now. Other than this to say that I think diets are bullshit. <laughs> coming from a voice of, you know, coming from a space of years of a eating disorder and issues with food and I finally come to a place of realizing that most of us don't need to follow strict diets to be happy. To be happy. Most of us do not have to follow strict diets to be happy. You know, so I did not say to be thin, to be this, to be that, to fit into our favorite dreams. I said to be happy. And isn't that the most important thing? I think so. Okay. So what are we doing today? Carbs. <laughs> More very starchy fraught carbs. These are patacones, which are green plantains. You can see this like the middle of a banana. These are also in the international aisle of your grocer. They are, they look like big ass bananas. You can buy them when they're still green, which is what we did to make these, or you can buy them very yellow, almost black, um, when they're a lot sweeter, but when they're green, we make things like this. We fry them into chips and things like that. So this is our bun, Kenneth, what do you think? Delicious. So we got, that's our the base of our bun. We're gonna add, can you pass me a spoon, darling? We're gonna add a couple of things here to start. Meg's Miracle Sauce. This is our all-purpose delicious sauce here that we serve on the buffet. Available in my latest cookbook, Miracle Meals 2.0 Sauces and Sweets. So we're getting liberal with that. Because these are very starchy, both the, the yuca and the patapones, it's all about having dipping sauces. So we did the Miracle Sauce as the base there, and then we're going to add some coleslaw. You want some slaw on there, Kenneth? Mm -hmm. Non-starchy cabbage carrot slaw, mostly cabbage, with some apple cider vinegar, um, lime juice, deliciousness. Then we're going to add... I brought little tomatoes because I can I didn't want to bother getting out big ones that one feels like it's gonna explode when I cut it so I'm just gonna do serrated knives much easier for cutting tomatoes Let's do a couple thin slices like that that's gonna go on top of our burger so this is done as well as it's gonna be for TV I'm just gonna scrape that up delicious place that on top yummo and we're gonna add a little bit of non-vegan. We're non we're non-veganizing this because we're adding local goat cheese from the farm next door. We're gonna add some marinated mushrooms. Delicious. And then we're gonna add our tomatoes. Forgot to add the lettuce. That's kind of an important aspect of a burger, isn't it? A little bit of lettuce for some crunch. What do you think, Kenna? Mm -hmm. Then a little bit of, we need some tomato goodness, so I'm adding, this is not ketchup, but it is the closest thing we have to it right now, which is our roasted tomato, roasted red pepper tomato soup. There is your burger. This is gonna be our ramekin ketchup. Mix that in there, because there's a bit of miracle sauce. And then, your coconut, garlic, yucca fries. What do you think? Boom. Tiny bit of a pea shoot salad there. What do you think, Kenneth? Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. Boom! Shaka laka, my friends. This is all we have for today. 
The recipe will be going into the comments in the next 10 minutes. Delicious. That, my friends, is all we have. Da, 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 this Meg, this is Meg, the on-site chef. I have to tell you, my team has taken over the restaurant, so I can do a ton of other stuff here at Rhythmia. And I'm so grateful to Kenneth, who is behind the camera, and my amazing, amazing crew at Roots. They, they have been just carrying my recipes and menus off on their own with such success. The whole time I've been gone, having baby and all of that, so I'm grateful. Can't wait to have you guys all here very, very soon. Let me tell you what's going on next week. I think next week's Facebook Live is going to be... Da, 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 da. Where is my list? Facebook Lives. January 12th, black garlic is the topic of the day. If you don't know what black garlic is, tune in. If you do, tune in too. Okay, guys, have a beautiful rest of your weekend.